So as I let my computer does do its thing on the last video that I created, um, I decided to go ahead and make this video. Now, don't worry, all these products will be in the description for your convenience, so you won't have to keep going back and forth to certain segments of the video. But um, basically what I did to get to this point is I started off with a cast of my wife's torso. I used, uh, what's this, uh, Paris of, um, uh, a plaster of Paris, which you can get from Home Depot, Lowe's, anywhere. I used this and I went ahead and used some um, cheesecloth, this right here. And I just cut these in strips and use that as the bandages because it, it, it just is cheaper that way to do it. Um, so once I had the cast ready to rock and roll, I then took two millimeter craft foam and I shaped it to the mannequin that I just created for my wife's torso. Um, the reason why I used two millimeter versus anything else is because it was easier to shape it to the mannequin. And what I found was when I was using... Doing my Judge Dredd helmet, I kept running into the same damn issue because I used 10 millimeter foam on my Judge helmet, Judge Dredd helmet. And the problem that I kept running into, I kept breaking through uh, because I didn't want it to be too damn thick. And I kept breaking through the Bondo and having to, you know, use a Dremel to carve out that piece to put more Bondo there to keep the shape. And it just became a nuisance. So, um to each his own. If I'd known this before, I would have never used. I probably would have used five millimeter foam versus ten millimeter foam. But it's it, you know it is. It's trial and error. But I used two millimeter foam with this, shaped it, and since I wasn't going to be using the foam as the primary shaper, it was no reason for me to go any heavier. I knew I was going to use bondo, so that's when that's why I used the two millimeter foam. So what I did was for structure and integrity, I put. I use this Bondo glass and I, I'm going to put my Pinterest uh, link in there, too, because I have document pictures of all this stuff in my Pinterest. So I use Bondo glass. This has those short hairs that really strengthens the piece. It's like it's like fiberglass. Uh, then I went ahead and I used primer filler for the shape of the uh, the piece. Um, my wife is not this well endowed, but I I'm a guy and I like breast and. I figured it'd be really nice to see her with some D's. So uh, I went ahead and made some D's. <laughs> uh, I'm not even sure. These probably just be C's. I don't know. Anyway, so I shaped it and I just started. I did one side, got that the way I wanted to, and then I just mirrored it on the other side. That's how I did that. Um, again, I used the craft foam and I used her torso to have like a guide on how to keep this uniform as possible. But that's what I did. Another reason why I used the Bondo versus the foam is because I knew I was going to make these dips and, and divots and I didn't want to run the risk of cutting into the foam except for here because I wanted to have a melted metal type effect and I got that with the foam. Once I broke through the Bondo, it gave me a really nice melted uh, effect melted metal effect you can do that you can get the same effect with hot glue i just didn't want to use hot glue because i knew i was going to have this piece in front of a heater most of the time and i didn't want that to run the risk that just you know falling out and melting it i didn't want that so i just used the foam okay so after i did that and i shaped it everything the way i wanted to i went ahead and started sanding and priming and glazing and all that stuff which is a lot of work but to get to this finish, it was all worth it. So once I shaped it the way I wanted to, I went ahead and used some spot glazing putty. Now, a lot of people complain about this being pulled out when you're using sandpaper. It tends to come out. The reason why you're having that issue is one, you're either not letting it cure, which it takes time for this to cure. You can throw a heater in front of it to make it cure faster, but you're not giving it time to cure and or you're using too low of a grid of sandpaper. I recommend you use 220. I've never had a problem with 220 grit. This doesn't build up well on itself, though. Don't think you're going to, you know, take a big crevice and, you know, build on top of it. And because it, it tends to slide off of itself. So that's not a good idea to do. But this is great for pinholes and small cracks and stuff like that and scratches. Also, using this as a guide coat. Now, 
you can probably get away with a better way of doing that. Um, I like this way because I kill two birds with one stone. Not only am I uh, filling in pinholes and all kinds of stuff, but I'm also able to see my high and low spots with this because it's red. So I really, really like that. Again, all the pictures will be in my Pinterest. Now, once I've done that and I've gotten rid of all my high low spots, I then go ahead and prime it. I prime it with primer filler, Rust-Oleum primer filler. This is a really good filler. It's, you know, you're sandable and everything like that. And um, I sand this with 200 grit as well. This also helps fill in, you know, pinholes and scratches as well. So that's why I use this. After that, I do that and I sand it back. Uh, I, you know, use that also to grade my work to see if there's any more pinholes or whatever. And if they are, I go and I spot that pinhole with this. Um, word to the wise, this will melt the primer a little bit, which is not a bad thing. It actually helps because it does go into the cracks a little bit better or the, the pinholes a little bit better if you do that. But I'm just letting you know, if you see that the, the primer is sliding off, don't worry. Just, you know, recode it. You'll be fine. Because once it's secured, it'll be fine. It's just, all it is is the alcohol in it that's that's making that happen. And once you send that back with another 200 um, pass, 220 grit pass, I prime it again. And I keep doing that process until I get all the scratches, all the pinholes, and everything out of the paint, out, out, out of the piece. Now, after I've done that, while I'm waiting for the primer to cure, again, you can always heat um, speed this up with putting a space heater in front of it. And that will um, speed up the curing process. While I'm doing that, I go and I decant my paint. Um, and I prep my paint. So the paint that I used here is Carbon Mist. This is the one that I used for this base coat. The second one, which is this one here, is Soft Iron. Um, flat Soft Iron. OK, it has the, the sparklies and everything like that in it as well. So it all looks the same. It's work. And if you haven't noticed a pattern with the the brand that I'm using, <laughs> I'm going to let you know right now. There's a pattern. There's a reason why I use only one brand. Um, these tend to work best with one another. You can switch and change the brands if you like, but I prefer to stay with one brand. Um, you can use Krylon and just stay with Krylon or whatever you want to do is entirely up to you. But I personally like to stay with one particular brand. So I got the Carbon Mist and I got the soft iron, um, flat soft iron decanted. And now I'm letting all the gases get out. OK, there's a lot of gas is going to be left in the paint. You want that to get out. There's two ways you can do it. You can stir it until they start bubbling up to the top and stop and let the bubbles go down. Or you could put it in front of a space heater to heat up the paint and that will help um, release the gases as well. I do a mixture of both because it, it speeds up the process. But um, yeah, any space heater would do now. The space heater is vital for speed because if you are trying to get this done quickly, the last thing you want to do is wait a day between every single extra coat. You don't want to have to wait a day. You put this down and you got to wait a day. Then you put your chili coat down and you got to wait a day. Then you go back and you put this down and you wait a day. It's about four days just for the freaking paint to cure. I don't do that. I went, I go ahead because I don't have time and to wait that long. I go ahead and use the space heater. Put this on top of the um, table, put the the prop in front of the space heater for an hour, an hour and a half, and it's cured enough so I can go ahead and I can sand it down and get rid of whatever um, blemishes, you know, dust particles, because as you can see, there's tons of dust that I'm working around. It's dust everywhere, and I still was able to get this look just because I sanded everything down. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm doing a video on why you should just sand your base coat so i'm not going to go into that detail on that but i sand everything down and i'm ready to rock and roll now as far as the detail is concerned i use this all right for the um cuts and bruises and stuff like that and all this stuff uh for this i just used a round rotary cutter for that and then i went ahead with some sandpaper on a stick and just 
fine tuned it. Um, I don't know if the stick is available anywhere. It's just it's just a it's just a you know um, ice pop sickle stick. Uh, let's see if I can find here it is. This right here with a rounded edge. And then I just go in there and just get that uniform the way I want it and shape it. So now I got the detail in. Now I'm ready to rock and roll. My paint is um is heated up. Oh, cutting the paint. I almost forgot that. You gotta cut the paint. Um, this is something that I use to cut my paint. This is paint thinner. You can get this from Hobby Lobby, you can get it wherever. Again, all this is gonna be in the description for your convenience, so you don't have to worry about running around looking for it. But um, yeah, you, you thin the coat, you thin the paint. I recommend you test it on a little portion of paint to find out what your ratios are. I use two to one, and the reason why two to one paint, two paint one um, thinner, and that gives me the best flow with my air gun, my airbrush, which is an air uh, Neo Air. I got this again from Hobby Lobby. Um. Because uh, you want it to be able to um, spray, um, you know, flow f um, well through this the airbrush. So this way you can get the best look of your piece. And uh, it just looks, uh, looks so, so good. So um, now I did the details. I got all this in there. I'm ready to rock with that. I'm happy with that. Now it's time for me to do my first coat of paint. This is when the space heater really comes into shine. You want your room to be hot, 70, 80, 90 degrees, because this is going to help your paint flow better. Um, it's going to help it hit the, the it's, just, it's just better to have a hot room. If it's cold, it's not going to flow as better, as good. And you should also heat up your paint. Put your paint, as you can see, my clear was in front of my space heater I'm, I'm not using it now because i'm done for the day but it was in front of my space heater and i just heat up the jar of paint until it gets to a warm a very warm you know touch and so when i put it through the air gun or uh, the airbrush it does it, it eliminates two things one it doesn't clog up your air gun airbrush as much as a matter of fact i have yet to have a problem once i heated up the paint is when the paint starts getting um cool when i start having a problem with that which is another reason why you want your room to be warm because you're shooting air through the paint which is cold it's, it's cooling off and it's making it dry a bit faster so you might have issues with your nozzle um clogging up because this paint was not meant to go through an airbrush like that even though it can it was designed to go through one of these things. So, yeah, that's one of the things you might want to consider, heating up your paint. I can't stress that enough. It does flow better. In a warm environment with warm paint, you will get the best spray. All right. So, you spray it. You're ready to rock and roll. Now it's time to sand it back. But before you do, prop this up in front of the space heater for a good hour so you can maximize the curing or at least the flash drying um it won't be cured yet but it will be hard enough so you can sand it down with 800 grit mm -hmm. now once you got that sanded down you're ready to rock and roll you throw your first set of clear coat on your base coat not this yet because you haven't you haven't painted this part you just painted the whole the whole thing with your base coat you want to clear that because in the event that you make a mistake with the next level of paint, you don't have to run the risk of going straight through and screwing up your base coat. You don't want to have that problem. So I clear it with some clear coat and then I'm, I'm, I'm safe. I'm, you know, it's just an added protection. That's all it really is. It's an added protection. Um, but you want to sand back your 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 clear coat you know i did it with 1500 grit and i just stopped i didn't go further than that just 1500 grit and i was done um then after you've done that you go ahead and get your second coat of paint which is this one right here which is the flat uh soft iron you spray that and then you sand that down with 800 grit to get rid of all the dust particles and imperfections lint and and orange peel or whatever would have you and then you spray your final um, clear coat. You clear it, 
like two or three coats, depending on what you want to do. And once you've done that, now is time to use this, your metallic aluminum, so you can get this detail effect right there with the scratches and stuff. And I even got some chipping here. You can do all that after you've sprayed your clear coat because you're going to have to sand back your clear coat anyway. Now, at this point, you have two choices. You can either start with 1500 grit, 1200 grit, or you can go down to 800 grit, which is what I did. I wanted to speed up the process. And because I had all these details that I wanted to get out, because when you spray this, it's going to make a, it's going to make like a little, like a little round, round spot, whatever. And you want to spend sand that down. So I use 800 grit to sand that back to get to this point. Then you go to your thousand grit. Then you go to your, 1500 grit then you go to your 2000 grit then you go to your 3000 grit and by that point you should have a very smooth very flat surface to buff that's when you go ahead and you use your buffing wheel now this is a black and decker buffing wheel see there it's black and decker it's very cheap it cost me like 40 bucks or something like that um it comes with three pads the one that's already up there and these two pads you got a uh, a rough one, a somewhat semi-middle one, and then you have the smooth one. I also went ahead and got me a wool pad to take off the rest of what was left from these two pads, okay? You don't want to be too conservative with your with your your um, compound. You want to kind of be a little bit liberal, but you want to be conservative when it comes down to your polish because you just, that's just what works for me so you know one dab here one dab here and then you polish it but um when you're doing it with your um compound oh let me just show you what compound i used very simple very easy mcguire's rubbing compound that's what i used that was it um i also used this at the beginning you know um now this is what i had laying around so i used this as the starter, then I went to the Meguiar's, then I went to the polishing, which is the Meguiar's Ultimate Polish. Again, all this stuff will be in the description for you guys. So, I used that, and after I, I buffed it out with the uh, the uh, last one, the, um, the fine one, um, I got to this point, and it was shiny as all hell. I mean, it's really really good this is really good work i've cut up i've could have done better um to be perfectly honest but um i got a whole more i got a shit ton more to do i gotta finish putting the the, the decal here i might even put some rivets here i gotta finish the tongue um then i gotta do the rest of her plates her body and i also gotta do my own stuff so it's so much to do i can't make it as perfect this whole process took me three days to do from start to finish, three days, and I could have possibly done it sooner, but I ran into some hiccups, and those things, you know, take time to fix and repair. But um, that was the video, basically, from start to finish. Go to my Pinterest, like, subscribe, um, comment, all that jazz. Uh, look for yourself, the progression, and hopefully this video helps you guys out. I know it's all over the place, but this is being shot on the uh, fly. And um, that's it. You guys have a good one.